Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Jonak, and my guest, Kelly Brooks. She is from Lotus Love, so find her on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Lotus Love, um, and you find, uh, you can find out everything about her. And today we're looking at the week of August the 23rd to the 29th. Now remember, on the 22nd of August, the Sunday before this week starts, so to speak, we have a full moon which is called a sturgeon moon. And the sturgeon moon was named because the sturgeons, fish, <laughs> um, could, have, could be sort of more easily picked off. So it was about hunting and sustaining yourself, but the sturgeons can live up to 60 years in the wild and only reach sexual maturity about between the age of sort of 15 and 20. So therefore, the, one of the main messages is with the sturgeon is even if you feel vulnerable, right? And even if you feel like, whoa, I'm not sure where I'm going here. Don't rush anything. It is really important as the energy that, that, that comes into the week, regardless of what the overall energy adds to it, is for us all to realize, should we feel vulnerable, so be it, right? And there's nothing that needs to be resolved super quick or rushed unless the guys tell us otherwise with regards to the overall mm -hmm. energy. But it is important to not underestimate the energy a full moon has on the collective. And the more spiritual you are, the more you realize that we come from the stars and that the moon is basically a part of Earth that is sort of missing, if that makes sense. So there is this feeling of loss and longing and so that all fits in and with, with, with the vulnerability feeling that you may or may not um, feel massively you know because of the full moon really hitting us on the 22nd <sighs> that was that <laughs> let's have a look at the overall energy before we start with the star signs and we're in the star sign of Virgo um, so um, I, I'm going to ask you to do the open okay. energy just to see what we got for the whole week. All right. Yeah, so you talk. it's interesting that you're talking about feeling vulnerable. So, and I think there's a sense of chaos at the moment as yeah. well. I felt it the other day with the wind. Um, and yeah, and, and this fits in with this because um, I'll just do three cards on this. And I feel that we've got too much going on at the moment in the universe. It's just chaotic. Um yeah, the other day I went out and it was windy and I lost an important piece of paper and receipt and my hair was all over the place. I felt very stressed. So I think you might have been tuning into that recently and that's, there's a lot of that chaos. And, and I think that we, I'm also seeing that we, we might see sort of, um, I don't want to say natural disasters, but I want, you know, I think maybe sort of high winds, storms, yeah. and I, I just feel yeah. that I can... Feel Absolutely, and, and after the floods happened in Germany, yeah. um, um, luckily uh, that none of these things happened in an area where I know people. Yeah. You know, that does yeah. obviously mean, mean luckily, yeah. you know, but at least yeah. not, none of my friends or family exactly. members were, yeah. were, were mega affected by yeah. it. Um, I then, you know, started Googling things or YouTubing things, and it happened um, in countries so far away from Europe mm. as well. So there is something going on. And also when you feel vulnerable, vulnerability, because it makes you feel a bit more sluggish, therefore you do things slower, it can actually lead to, um, to cleansing, mm. right? So anyway, um, let's have a look at the overall energy for the week. We're looking at the week of August the 23rd to the 29th, 2021. Okay, and um, yeah, so, I, I, so I'm also getting um, this sense of chaos, but this is a time of really knowing your priorities. So knowing what's important. And I think that, you know, obviously we've had this pandemic, but also we need to get back to our, our priorities and family and friends and animals and, and the, our garden and nature. So we've realised that, you know, these flashy cars and, you know, having flashy objects and things like that, um, they're not actually serving us and they're not making us happy. So I think that we're having a spiritual awakening in the sense that family is becoming the most important thing and friends. And, you know, I, I, I'm using the, the term family very loosely because that could be, you know, your best friends, the, the, 
you know, the person that lives down the road that you see every day, your cat, your dog, you know, family is, is means many things to many people. Um, but we're getting a, a shift in priorities where we're moving away from materialism. Um, but I, I, I feel that we're all still a little bit lost on that journey. We're still we're searching and seeking this new paradigm, this new way of living and being. So we've started on that journey. There might be a sense, and, and this comes with the chaos of the, the sort of the storms and floods, because I feel like we're, we're now on this journey where things have got to shift. But in order to shift, we have to sort of have a sense of being lost in order to then be found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, uh, and yeah, so we are moving. I, I do believe that the earth has been sort of cleaning itself lately and it is cleaning itself. But, you know, if you can think about the tower, uh, tarot card, the building has to fall down and burn down sometimes in order to be rebuilt. Um, and I think that, you know, we are moving on to bigger, better things. We're, we're becoming much more focused on priorities and what's important. Um, but we have to have this sort of chaotic sense of cleaning and cleansing in order to to get there. Okay, so is this the energy for the week ahead that, yes. that we, we yeah. might feel again because obviously it fits yeah. with the vulnerability that we may not and another thing because um, the, the the full moon the sturgeon was, say, was saying um, to not rush anything so maybe it's a good idea that it can't be rushed because we're still going through I stuff. I think we'd like <clears> to rush it um, but there's a sense of frustration. I think I'm feeling that as well, mm. especially as a fire sign Sagittarian. But we, we're, yeah, with the sturgeon, we're not allowed to rush it. We're yeah. not going to be allowed to rush it because it will happen when it's meant Absolutely. to happen. Absolutely. And with regards to being allowed, you know, people, you have free will, but you override stuff doesn't mean it gets you anywhere. So that makes sense. Yeah. Right? So just to, to clarify this, because the way I feel this is, while this feels a bit like whoa okay you know things are still shifting um and people sort of like to know where they're headed it is not at all a negative energy it is just what it is yeah if that makes sense yeah. so there's no negativity here as far as i can no but see. it might be a bit <laughs> yeah it unnerving might feel, oh for sure because for sure. you know it's it feels wonderful in the sense that it's new and it feels like a new fresh energy but on the other hand it, it sort of takes you back a little bit um because you weren't expecting it yes. so it sort of you know takes you off guard i think it, it in a way newness brings a, it takes us out of our comfort zone and we feel a little bit uncomfortable mm. um but it's also exciting yeah that's, and that's... also it's one of the most powerful things that can happen to you because once you allow yourself to be outside of your comfort zone that's when you start exploring yeah then that's when you really get a sense of what's going on so shall we have a look at the individual star signs for the week ahead we are now in virgo so this week we're ending the um the uh, episode with leo right let's have a look at virgo let's see what we got for the week ahead Virgos, you have the elk and the bobcat. What that really means is two things, twofold, because you have two animal guides, so there's twofold. But oftentimes they give me an incoming energy and an outgoing energy. In Virgo's case, that's not what's happening here. This is just two animal guides combined to give you one message. Um, and the message is not necessarily a message, it's just meant as guidance, which is why they're called guides. And you have the elk. The elk is an animal with antlers. Every time you have an animal, animal with antlers, it means you're quite protected, right? So don't give in to feeling, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing here, right? Kind of thing. You are quite protected. Again, you don't have to rush anything because the elk, coming from the deer family, right? They don't like to be chased during the day. They bolt quite a bit when they're startled during the day they function best at sunrise and sunset that is their natural time of focus so your job this week is to actually just try and see if you can actually rest and relax and remember that your guides are with you then the bobcat is telling you while you're doing this while you're stepping back seek a vantage point so don't just relax and rest but while you're doing it Try to assess where, I, where am I in the scheme of things and what suits me and serves me and what isn't, right? Just so you know where energetically you are 
at this point in time. Now, you're not being asked this week to make major changes, if that makes sense, because the energy is about vulnerability. So shifting stuff too much could lead to quite a bit of an upset. The energy this week does not warrant major changes because there is not enough energy with mm. oomph behind you, right? So this week, Virgos, please, 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 just, and I, and I get this please, please, please thing because I think there's probably a lot of Virgos who are not the most patient people, <laughs> right? Um, doesn't always, doesn't, it's not, doesn't fit every Virgo, but that's my, my sense is there's a bit of, um, uh, you know, it's like, impatient is probably the wrong word, but certainly feeling stuck doesn't help. And so what the guides are saying is because the elk has a split hoof. So as the terrain gets difficult, he doesn't sink in. This is another message for you. You're, you're perfectly fine, you're perfectly safe. If things get more difficult, you won't even notice, right? So Virgo's just, and I'm not getting taking a week off. That's another thing that I'm getting. So if you are um, working somewhere or you are self-employed and you have clients, this is not the week to say like, okay, you know, screw you. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go away for a week. This is not the week. This is not about hiding. This is about resting and sitting back and just recharging your battery without worrying too much. That was the um, message for Virgo. Next star sign on our list is Libra. Okay, yeah, and it, it's so weird because I think this idea of us wanting to change things quickly but being frustrated is sort of manifesting itself and, and showing itself in all of, of the uh, different star signs. So I've got, um, in terms of Libra, I mean, you're very good at being dreamy anyway. Um, and you know you're that air sign and you're quite sort of in your head um, and I want you to really nurture that a little bit more um, that this week and I want you to think about the intuitive sensitive and artistic and friendly side of you um, and bring out you know and I think if you've been thinking about taking up new hobbies or revisiting old hobbies in like you know such as dancing painting you know drama art those sorts of things now would be the time to do that because i think it's about i feel it's time to tap into that creativity um and i see this sort of i'm seeing this pattern sort of with all of the the star signs where there's sort of this creativity and this this need to sort of you know uh, rush forward and then there's a sort of holding back so it's just not the right time yet so there is a sense of standstill and at the same time I feel this profound awakening um, so it's almost like you've got to do it internally um, and wait for the right time so it, you know it, it, it's almost like I'm getting a sense you might even be thinking about a new career or a, a shift or if it's not a new career then it's a new hobby or a new um, activity that you want to engage in but so there's a lot of thinking and preparation and spiritual work going on um, but not so much of the actual physical movement and um, so just the preparation and preparing for this you know change and shift okay thank you very much that was Libra going into Scorpio but I need some water so let me just stop this here for a second I get some water and then I will be right back with um, whatever the next star sign is Scorpio all right We'll be back. Hello. <laughs> We're back. Well, as far as you're concerned, it was just like ding, ding, and, and we never <laughs> went anywhere. So let's have a look at Scorpio. You mentioned earlier that uh, you use the term family loosely, mm. but it came up. And for Scorpio, you have the spirit of family, and yet it might not necessarily relate fully to your flesh and blood family, it might for some. What you have is that anything that hasn't been really spoken about with regards to the people you consider your family, right? Now is the week, this week, um, 23rd to the 29th of August, 2021, you have the shaman of courage right, to the, right next to the spirit of family. So what they're saying to Scorpios is, Anything, any elephants in the room, right? This is the week to mention them. Remember, because it is a vulnerable time, energetically speaking, and a bit of a time of feeling stuck almost, um, they're not asking you to make the major 
arguments, you're not in court, right? Basically, this is what I feel. So this is not about um, making massive changes. But the feeling is that once situations present themselves, where someone probably, this is, what I, this is the way the guy showed it to me, mm. where someone repeatedly says something they said before, which is absolutely fucking bollocks, right? Pardon my French. And you always just swallow your pride and you never say anything. Mm. This is not the week to be loud about it. But what the guides are saying to you is have some courage to stand up for what you believe in because this is about judgment and there's spirit of family. So there's judgment likely towards you, Scorpio. Um, and this is the week where you say, I've had enough of this, right? Take it or leave it. So this is the week. Um, this is the energy I'm getting for Scorpios. If you are, if you feel you have the best family, you know, uh, in in all the families in the world, good for you. The energy here says differently. So it may be for the Scorpio that says like I'm struggling, and it could be. In, um, see, this is what I'm getting as well. It's not absolutely major. So if I give an example, let's just say you you change your food habits, and all of a sudden you're vegetarian. And then the summer barbecue comes around. Mm. They all go like, well, you know, go and eat a bloody salad. You know, mm. what do you want from me? Mm. Kind of thing, right? If this becomes sort of um, a running gag for people to sort of mock you simply because they just don't understand why you would do such a thing, um, that's when you say to them, you know, that you have the right to be the way you are mm. and that you're not standing for these remarks. So it's, it's, it's energy like this, where I just feel like you're standing up for yourself without um, causing too much of a ruckus, if that makes yeah. sense, right? So, and as you can tell with Scorpio here, <clears throat> the guides are a bit vague. So they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of showing to me because he, things aren't written in stone. Mm -hmm. And whoever says something, you know, there might be different people in the scenario or family that actually either gang up or, or individually still have the same sort of mindset, which doesn't quite fit yours anymore because you've changed, yeah. if that makes sense. And so therefore, eventually, you know, when people feel like, oh, I got someone who's on my side here, even though, you know, it's, it's weird changing sides or, or choosing sides, um, they might just this week come out of the woodwork and say something incredibly silly, if that makes sense. And don't just go like, ah, oh, it's them again, <laughs> right? Which is not always the, the worst thing to do, is to say like, you know what, um, I have a different opinion and you can all just, you know. Mm -hmm. But this is the week for Scorpios, because you have the shaman of courage, to speak up, because this is about you allowing others, and again, family is not just flesh and blood, um, your partner that you spend a lot of time with could be your family. Mm -hmm. You may have best friends, which is your soul family, right? So you have to sort of reflect on who and what family is for you. Um, this is the week for Scorpios to actually stand up for yourself and speak up for yourself. Right? So I wish you could have just said that, but they never do. <laughs> anyway, moving to the next star sign, which is Sagittarius. Yeah, well, following on from that, I feel that this is the time for us to start challenging those Victorian norms of like, you know, you've got to be, you know, 2.4 children, male, man, woman, married, you know, yeah. um, I think it's time for us to move beyond that. You know, it, it's lacking in imagination anyway, and I am picking up on that, that we, we need to look at family groups and friendship units in a different way and, and understand that there are modern families now and it's things are very different so I just wanted to you know I was just channeling that I think that's I think that's the age that we're in at the Absolutely. moment. So Sagittarius. Okay so um, what I've got here is as a Sagittarian and I'm actually a Sagittarian with Virgo in ascendancy so I'm very complicated <laughs> uh, free spirited <laughs> control freak but anyway we've got this need <laughs> to just sort of um, sort of you know run ahead and be very passionate self-assured assured, uh, adventurous there's a restlessness to us um and i feel that there's this sudden event so i i feel and i'm getting a sort of situation at work where i think many sagis might have put up with things for a long time because 
Sagittarians are quite practical as well. They always think about the money coming in, but so they'll probably have, you know, tolerated an unbearable situation for longer than they should have done. But I feel like that we are getting to that tipping point where they're just going to say, okay, that's enough now. And I feel that they, and again, I'm just getting a lot of jobs and careers at this time. This is the time when people just start to think, you know what, this is not serving me. I want to go and do something completely different. So I feel this with Sagittarius that you're just going to go, you know, full steam ahead, um, typical Sagittarian. Um, and, but there's a confidence and, um, you know, a sense of uh, self-assuredness about it. There's a creativity and, 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 and a sense of humour and mis mischief around it as well, which is... Um, always a Sagittarian thing. I was always told how mischievous I was, um, especially when I was at university. So there's a sense of like things that are new, exciting endeavours and using your originality and your ingenuity, which is very Sagittarian. But I am going to say stop right there, Sagittarius, um, because there is that fear of money as, and the practicality. So we'll go, you know, off we go and then we go, oh, well, actually, <laughs> I need to rein myself back in and think, OK, this needs to be practical. So I'm giving you that advice, you know, keep those ideas, you know, you're. Sagittarians are so talented at ideas, at energy, at passion. They're the party starters. But at the same time, that's got to be balanced out with, you know, work, thinking about money and having that wisdom around the practicality of those new ideas and concepts. Okay, thank you very much. That was Sagittarian. Now we're going to the next star sign, which is Capricorn. I just noticed because we have Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. So I would therefore would have to read Pisces, which is my own star okay. sign. So let's just change it a little. I'm going to give you <laughs> Capricorn and Aquarius, and then I'll ask you to do Pisces, because okay. I don't want to read yeah, my own yeah, star sign. that's fine. It's not that I don't like to, like to read my own star sign, but if I don't have to, which is quite rare, mm. you know, I, I, obviously, I, I obviously prefer that, it's, you know. It's too close to the bone, though, <laughs> Absolutely, isn't it? absolutely, yeah. you know. <laughs> anyway, so that's how this works. Capricorn, I don't do short and sweet, but the message here for Capricorn is sort of short and sweet. You have the hummingbird and the peregrine falcon. It is really simple this week. This is the week of not doing much. This is the week to allowing yourself to, you know, take things slowly. And the hummingbird is telling you, no matter how crooked the tree is, which represents your life, you will find a way. And the falcon is telling you, I can see my food a mile away. So nothing that isn't for you, will pass you by, right? You will see any opportunity that is for you come your way, so you don't have to stress about things. And no matter how difficult things may feel at this point in time, don't worry about it. The other thing I'm getting, um, feels like they're retracting here a little bit from not doing too much, mm -hmm. because what I'm getting is that while you feel in a difficult situation and the hummingbird is ready or, or capable of working any tree, my feeling is also, if your energy goes to an area where you don't feel you want to be, you're not welcome there, could be, you know, your, uh, a job you don't like, um, could be a relationship you're in, this is the week to look at manifesting different outcomes. If this is about work for you, then this would be the way to say, you know, um, all I ever think about is that is that job and all I ever do is come back and be and be knuckered, right? Why not use the time that you normally use to, to sort of, you know, give out about it, which is not a judgment, right? But you would have to sort of vent this um, and look at things you really want to do. Maybe there's a course that gets you somewhere in time. Now it's time to look at these things. Shift your thoughts from what you want to this is where I am and I'm not happy. That's mm. sort of what I'm getting for Capricorn. Now we're looking at the next star sign, Aquarius. Let's have a look what we got for Aquarians. Now, Aquarians, remember that when it comes to, to star signs, you are what is referred to as the water bearer if that makes sense. Mm. You are that star sign that unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, <clears throat> um, gives all the time. Um, oftentimes you forget yourself totally and are just there for others. What a stupid concept that is. <laughs> you know, when you look at it logically, it doesn't get you anywhere, mm. right? And I'm not saying change your ways. All, I, all, all I'm hearing is because you're the water bearer, make sure you use some energy to look at yourself, 
right? And what I get for Aquarians this week, we're, we're having the wood duck and the caribou. The wood duck is the symbol of patience because the wood duck, the duck is a water animal that needs to be waterproof before she can swim, if that makes mm. sense, right? And the depiction here is an adult duck. So which means you don't have to prove anything to anybody and you can certainly do way more than people think you can do right so don't listen to people's mm, bickering and, and and sort of even nastiness right you're you're way better than this and you have the caribou also known as the reindeer <laughs> in less fanciful terms so again it's an animal with split hoofs and with antlers fully fully protected and 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 you know you will not sink in in short while this is the week for you to truly sit back, which is also, I know a lot of Aquarians who are not that capable of not doing anything, right? So that maybe is <coughs> the difficult part here this week. But really what you're being asked to do is to stop listening to everybody else's issues, right? And take time just to look at yourself realizing that you're actually quite safe and that you're actually the person that can call the shots if you so choose. You just need to make sure that other people, other situations don't take up too much of your own energy so you can actually look at it, right? Short and sweet, so, so to speak, <laughs> for Aquarians now going into my star sign, <laughs> Pisces. Okay, so I'm going to tell you Pisceans out there, you've been working too hard. I, I get a sense of you've come from burnout a little bit. Um, does that make sense no, to, to you? Me, yes, I, feel, I feel there's been a lot of stress. It's come at you from all angles, and there's just there's been a lot of sort of stress related illness, and it could have just been you know catching a cold because you're run down, or you know just sore throats and things like that, um, and just yeah feeling exhausted. Um, so I, I feel that Pisces have been quite burnt out. But also, I feel like you've been working through a lot karmically and energetically, and I feel like you've had these many lifetimes and sort of worked through a lot and resolved a lot of issues in the past year or so and, and just put things to bed and, you know, put things to rest, really. So this is, in a way, it's sort of positive and negative at the same, bittersweet, really, at the same time, because, yeah, you need to rest now and... Um, get back to yourself but at the same time you, you know you've achieved a lot as well um and moving forward um i i do feel and again so we you know i'm seeing this around a lot of this um this week's readings around the leadership and things like that and so we've got the emperor which is now you know you're exhausted rest you've resolved a lot of stuff it's time now to develop those leadership skills and to really go for what you want in a very sort of thorough disciplined um, and structured manner so I'm seeing the emperor sitting on that throne saying you know I'm going to come into my own now it's now time you know to, to do whatever I was put on this earth to do so it's quite a powerful card um, I, I see um, I, I see a sort of feminine element as well which is money which is sort of Lakshmi really like a sort of Lakshmi energy so it's a feminine um, sense of intuition with money so if you put your mind to it you can really um, harness that Lakshmi energy um, and I think you know money's misunderstood um, in Western culture quite a lot because you know I think actually money is an energy um, you can use it for a lot of good um, and you it, it's infinite and you can just keep asking for more but as long as you understand how money works you don't hoard it so you know tap into that Lakshmi energy and now is the time to spread your wings, but also be with like-minded people, you know, networks and mentors um, that actually have, you, you have much more in common with. So in the past, you might have spent time with people that you, you just, they weren't really your cup of tea. Um, and now it's time to find people that really speak your language. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> It is nicer when, when someone else tells you something is, kind of thing, it? right? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Now moving on to the next star sign, which is Aries. We're looking at the week of August the 23rd to the 29th, 2021. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, there was a um, full moon on the 22nd. Now that energy stays with us until poss possibly midweek. So that energy of, of feeling vulnerable will eventually, you know, sort of, Wednesday, Thursday around that time, mm -hmm. really get less 
obvious and less difficult to handle. And Aries, <clears throat> okay, Aries are, you are, okay, I wouldn't say that, that, that all star signs aren't special, but Aries is special because you are the beginning, if that makes sense. So <laughs> all planets, right? So you have a, a governing planet and so and all all star signs go along what is called the ecliptic, so the Milky Way thing. And they all go there in 30 degree fashion, right? And Aries is the beginning of everything, right? So in other words, because you are a, a doer and someone who, if you take charge, we actually get somewhere. That's an energy this week that you need to or should and maybe ought to harness a little bit more because you have the spirit of empowerment, which means whatever it is you want to do this week, you're being supported by your guides massively this week. And important, <laughs> you have the journey, which means you are on a journey. So, and since you're on a journey, there won't be a door to go through in the next couple of days. And like, oh yeah, I'm home now. Awesome, right? You are on a journey. So, as we all are, mm. right? You are on a journey. Your journey is possibly a little longer than you were hoping um, it to be. Of you know, that's that's what I'm getting. You you want stuff to sort of hmm, come back to something new, you know, which is not going to happen because you have the spirit of empowerment and you have the journey, which means now is the time as well for you to explore, maybe where you haven't been before. So I don't know who is. Um, who is Aries out there and who isn't, but the thing that the guides give me as well is that you would do very well with going on day trips, journeys, see something entirely different that um, engages your senses differently. Mm. Right? If you can't go anywhere, just overeat. <laughs> right? no, but I'm getting this feeling like, oh yeah, let's just, let's just, let's just engage my senses yeah. to Think about mm. something entirely different mm. to whatever is happening in my life without running away from it. Oil or yeah, something yeah, like yeah that. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all, all, all um, I got here for Aries. But you got the spirit of empowerment this week. So this is the time for you where um, it makes sense for you to look where you want to go without wanting to be there yesterday. If that makes sense, mm. right? So yeah. there was Aries going to the next star sign, which is. Taurus. Okay, so we've got a little bit of, I feel a little bit of Aries sort of travelling over to Taurus, which I think sometimes happens, yeah, doesn't absolutely, it? They spill, yeah. they spill into each other. Um, but I've got, I just really feel in the divine feminine at this time. Um, and I, you know, so I saw it with the, the Queen of Pentacles in the last card, and I'm seeing it, seeing it with the Queen of Fire in this card. So there's a lot of like divine feminine around. Um, and there's, there's this idea that I feel like things have been a bit humdrum for you lately. And it's time to really spread your wings. And I, I get a sense that you've been sitting there thinking, God, I used to have so much fun. I used to be so adventurous. And it's time to get that back um, and reclaim that and assert your independence and creativity. So I'm picking up a lot of in, um, people reconnecting with creativity in these readings and say, I just want to say, don't underestimate yourself. So it is time to spread your wings again. You know, we've all sort of retreated a little bit lately and I feel like, you, again, you want to get back out there and it's all about ideas for you. So lots of new ideas, lots of ideation, lots of new creations. Um, and I'm also getting a sense of things of beauty for Taurians as well. Taurians love beautiful things. They love nature. Um, I believe that beautiful things, you know, sometimes when we buy very beautiful things, it's not always greed. It's because we, it's, we're self-nurturing and we're taking care of ourselves. If, if we buy something that's good quality and very beautiful to look at. So I feel that there's a connection to nature as well that always is with Taurus and getting out into nature, flowers. I feel like Taurians really love the smell of flowers and, you know, um, just the, the details around nature as well. But also, you know, thinking about new ideas and getting ready. Again, I don't think it's the right time just yet, but it's almost like you're standing on that precipice ready to jump, but you're not going to jump just yet. But start thinking about this new way of life, these new ideas and asserting yourself um, in, you know, in a confident, warm, intelligent and graceful manner. Okay, thank you very much. I was Torians going into Gemini. <clears throat> Gemini, this is the week for you to look at hmm, 
not being alone, if that makes sense, not feeling isolated, really cut that feeling of mm. I'm, 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 I don't belong to anything. In other words, because this is a week of feeling a bit vulnerable and not doing too much. Um, this is nonetheless the week for Gemini's to reach out a little. Okay, you have, I, I tell you what you got here. You have the, you have the cow, the swan and the seagull. So the cow is what we also call the Übermother, if that makes sense. Mm. So you are a very caring person. And, and therefore, you know, people per se, you know, should be very grateful to have you. The thing you don't do is to realize it and actually say it to you. I've been telling this to everybody who, who, who listens that I had this mantra and have this mantra for the last 30 years where I wake up in the morning and go like, I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I say it. <clears throat> because it, it, it raises it my not? vibrations. It does. Okay. Because it, it raises my vibrations. Mm. It would be different if you say it with ego. It's like, mm. I'm the best thing in this life. Mm. But, um, so repeat after me, Gemini. I'm awesome. Say it again. I'm awesome. And just feel how it lifts and raises your energy. Right? So Sagittarians say it? <laughs> I'll <laughs> well, say it as well. Everybody, everybody can say it. But it just, it's, it just comes up here for Gemini as being really important to yeah. self empower. Yeah. And I notice that sometimes, as a, you know, energetically speaking, Gemini's, because you're not so good at patting yourself on the back, you will probably say like, I'm okay, mm. right? I'm, I'm yeah. all right, I'm an all right person. And what the universe is saying to you is, you're much more than just an all right person. You are awesome. You just need to see it and realize it without ego. That, that's what I'm getting. And because you have the sworn, this is also about realizing, and this is probably the main message because it's, of, it's in the middle. The way I feel this is that a lot of Geminis out there do not understand how to take compliments at all. So if someone comes up to you and says like, you know, let's just imagine me much younger, good looking, and I meet you in a, in, in, in a cafe and after 20 minutes, they say, oh, you got beautiful eyes, right? You probably seen this German fellas trying to get into my pants. <laughs> Rather than thinking, thank you. I might actually have mm. beautiful eyes. Mm. He could mean it because just, just because to... someone gives you a compliment mm. does not mean you have to do anything with them. Mm. But if you then go like that, that can't be true, right? I can't be good looking. I can't mm. be sweet. I can't be cute. I can't be intelligent, right? That means because you attract on your energy. If you have low self esteem, you attract people by default who will make it worse for you. You attract people that don't want you to succeed because you don't allow yourself to succeed as well, yeah. right? And the seagull is the animal that tells you now, since we're quite frank <laughs> um, with you, so to speak, you need to have a plan. You need to, in other words, decide and that changes now, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm gonna actually, you know, put some makeup on, you know, if you're a bloke, we're always good looking by nature, so we don't have to have to. <laughs> but, but, but if you are feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm going out today, you know, do it as if it was the best day of your life mm. and you just make an effort to go out, if that makes sense. That's what the guides are basically asking you to do, because having, having all of a sudden people pay attention to you, even though it is very shallow that you have to dress up for mm. people to pay attention to you. The point is that you say, yes, I dress up if this is what you choose to do, <laughs> because I want to reflect my best qualities by showing that to the world. So this is also how you can overcome your low self-esteem. Another really, really important message, and it's not just um, for Gemini, but I think it probably applies to everybody else who's, who's um, watching. Um, if you take, you know, we, we all use our phones all the time. If you take a selfie, and then you have it printed off, printed off in black and white and put it somewhere in the house. There's two things. Number one, black and white is much easier uh, and much nicer on, mm. on, 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 on aging because it is obviously, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it is classic. Yeah. Sure, classic. Yeah. The point is you have a black and white image of you. It feels like you're, you're, this is in the past. And when you then learn to, to look at yourself in this black and white image and you say good morning, to the, as I know this may feel weird at first, but if you have a little image of yourself and you say like, morning kind of thing, you learn to appreciate yourself again. You might actually still fall in love with you again. And when you feel like, yeah, now um, I can say good morning to myself again without having to say it to the black and white image, right? Then you can gift it to someone or whatever you want to do with it, if that makes sense. But 
my feeling is that Geminis do or would do well with having a physical and optical thing that reminds you. So it could be a note on the wall, I'm awesome, you know, kind of thing, whatever floats, floats your boat. But the feeling I'm getting for Gemini is that unfortunately you just sit there and you're not really feeling like, you know, life is going, life is going anywhere, if that makes sense. And so you give in to that low energy you find yourself in. And all the guides are saying to you is because you are the Uber mother, that caring, that caring being that just needs to find its tribe, if that mm. makes sense. Other people to pick you up. It starts with self-love, right? So, and that's what, um, I was a bit airy-fairy, I felt, <laughs> just the way the guides are this mm. week. Um, that was Gemini, and I just noticed, looking at this, that somehow the camera is sort of tilted. So when you see this, and we're sitting a bit like <laughs> this, it's just, um, I didn't put the camera in um, the stand right, kind of thing. But that was Gemini. Now we're having Cancer and Leo left. Okay. And now we're going to the star sign of Cancer. We're looking at the week of August the 23rd to the 29th, 2021. Please subscribe, please like, and please, please, please share this video really, really widely. And look at Lotus Love. I know we're not, I know we're not quite Lotus done yet, but my, Lotus Love readings. Yeah. Because my feeling is I will not probably do an outro. I just get this now. So I'm just okay. doing, this, doing this now, right a bit early, <laughs> right <laughs> before Cancer and Leo. Um, please, 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 if this video or these, these readings do anything for you, you might as well want to share. Because we're trying to reach as many people as possible. Since it's all free and sort of takes up our time, mm. it would be nice if we knew um, that people um, get messages from their guides. Right? Because at the end of the day, we only work here. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, right? So, with that, no further ado, this is Cancer. Okay. Um, now, Cancer, on, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Cancerians anyway. Uh, I've got very a lot of very close friends who are Cancerian. They're very kind, but I am going to say you are a little bit moody sometimes. But um, I'm a bit concerned that out of all of the star signs, you're struggling the most in this particular week because you've got a lot of decisions to make and you almost feel quite overwhelmed with it. Um, and I, you know, can't see the wood for the trees. I uh, feel a bit trapped, a bit stuck in. in a situation or a mindset that you know you need to move on from so I am just going to give you a little bit of sort of support there energetically um, and just say it, it actually don't worry too much you, it will feel like it's insurmountable that you can't solve this problem but what I am then seeing is the knight of air which is a lovely card to counteract that previous card seven of water um, and that basically says um, events will occur with great speed and um, there will be creative solutions so take time to carefully review your options because you're you're stuck in a bit of a quandary um, at the moment but it will be very quickly resolved but it will come so quickly that you won't really have time to process it so um, yeah your your sort of readings uh, for this particular week are quite different to the others um, and there is this sense of you needing to overcome a sense of feeling a little bit trapped and maybe just trapped in your own sense of fear or negativity maybe you put those barriers there yourself and this is an example of the previous star sign running over to this one because it's about the barriers but I heard somewhere someone say you are your own problem but you're also your own solution um, and I think a lot of the time we can be our own worst enemy. So I feel like I'm going to give that to Cancerians for this particular week because you can solve the problem. You're the problem and you're also the solution. And I'm giving you a bit of advice to move forward with. And I would say, you know, think about a new area, um, something that's a bit more challenging, you know, something that stretches you and something that takes you down a different pathway because you've got stuck into these old habits and they're not always serving you well. Thank you very much. That was Cancerians. Now going to the last star sign of the week, which is Leos. And Leos, you only have one job this week. One job. And that's all you have to do is to know and feel and trust that you are getting somewhere. You're getting anywhere and you don't have to sort of Think about it all the time, what it is you want to do, or, or even limit yourself by having thoughts that you only want to go in one direction. You have, okay, when, when I talk about the animal guides here, these are what, we, what is called animal deities, right? So you have um, a bird that's an animal deity. Now you have 
all animal deities with you this week. So you surround it by a multitude of guides that you also feel this week. So just allow yourself to soak up that high energy that you're, that you're getting. And then the other animal guide that you have is birds. And birds as plural means just sit back, elevate yourself, because you are going towards what I would call an energetic rebirth. You're getting much higher energy all of a sudden, you know, things will shift and you feel like, wow, this really works, <clears throat> if that makes sense. So don't despair. I'm getting this feeling that some, some Leos may be like, oh, nothing is working. I'm not sure where to go. La, la, la. And, and so there's this frustration feeling that I'm getting with Leo. And, um, <clears throat> and also Leos. By, your, by the very by the very animal guide that that represents your star sign, right? It is important that you you have boundaries, right? You wouldn't you know that's what Leos do. Yeah. They have a lot of boundaries, yeah. and yet, you know, to, to be kind to to, to, to the lions, <laughs> they really are the only social cat in in the universe. Mm. So you share that energy of yes, I I I'm looking out for a lot of people. And I would even raise someone else's, if that makes sense, mm. right? As long as you realize that your territory needs to be safe, right? So this week, have some boundaries. Don't allow people that are hmm, needy and maybe a bit too much and you know it, <laughs> right? Um, tell them off a little bit this week. Mm. Really, really important. Mm. Um, and, but for the rest of the time, you know, once you're done telling people off a little, <laughs> it's just... Things are coming your way and they all feel very positive. And your job is just to realize that you deserve them without ego. It's a really big mm -hmm. thing. A lot of people don't understand that because I'm very loud and out, outgoing. Um, but there is a big difference to say like, oh, I'm so awesome because that's ego. Yeah. But when you say like, you know what? I, I deserve to have mm -hmm. everything that comes my way. Mm -hmm. That's not ego. That's acknowledging it's that is also self-worth and mm. self-love. That's completely different mm. to ego kind of thing. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because a lot of Leos have probably been told in their life that there's a that you're a touch or, or a tad um, egotistical mm. because you don't suffer fools well. Yeah. Right? So so in other words, um, that doesn't doesn't mean just because you you don't suffer fools doesn't mean you 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 know how awesome you are, mm. right? And again, we had this with other star signs. All the guides are saying to you this week, just relax and and allow yourself to know. Um, yes, I need to watch my my environment a little and probably tell people off that take away too much of my energy and then just sit there, relax for the rest of the week um, or for the week to come. And um, and just have faith. That makes sense. Come on, D H. Faith. <laughs> have trust. <laughs> it's a bit easier because t not easier to pronounce than <laughs> right. So that's all we got this week um, for all the star signs. Thank you so much for being here. That yeah, was thank awesome. You, Second for time. And remember, to look here. at Lotus Law of Readings. Facebook.com forward slash Lotus Law of Readings. Now that I get that right, I'll <laughs> we'll say it again. Right. And please subscribe. And please um, make sure you 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 know watch this uh, the next video and maybe the week before and you know share it widely and all that kind of stuff because that's what we're doing it for right for you to get guidance from from all our spiritual helpers um and and please share it right so that's all we have time for bye, -bye.